Okay, let's attempt to find the expected value of the geometric distribution again. So first, recall the story that you are performing independent trials, each with two outcomes, the same probability of success on each trial, and you're going to perform those trials until you achieve the first success. So recall we constructed the probability distribution function, or the probability mass function in this case because it's discrete. So the probability it takes x trials to achieve the first success means you have 1 minus p failures times uh, the probability of success on the last trial. All right, and, that's, and x is the random variable that counts the number of trials until you achieve success. All right. So to find the expected value of any discrete distribution, it's the sum of all x in our random variable x times p of x. And so in our particular scenario, we're starting at x equals 1, right? We have to have at least one trial if we're gonna, if we, to, in order to get a success, up to infinity of x times 1 minus p to the x minus 1 times p. Okay? Perfect. Okay, so if we want to start our summation at 0, this would become x equals 0 to infinity. Now I have to change my all my x's so that I generate the same sum. So this x becomes x plus 1, and then you have 1 minus p to the x times p. And you can come over here and verify that you're generating the same sum, right? So it's 1 times 1 minus p to the 0 times p plus 2 times 1 minus p times p plus, and so on. And over here, we have 0, we get 1, times 1 minus p to the 1, I'm sorry, to the 0 times p plus, then x is 1, so 1 plus 1, we get 2, times 1 minus p to the 1 times p, and so on, we're convinced. Okay, so that, just so it's, that does not make it clear, let me rewrite that. So that's x plus, ah, plus 1, parentheses. There we go. Okay, now we're going to distribute this and pull the sum apart. So now we have x equals 0 to infinity, x times 1 minus p to the x times p, plus 1 times 1 minus p to the x times p, all within that same sum. Um, we can split the sum up, but also notice this first term right here, if we plug in 0, we just get 0. So the first term really starts at x equals 1, right? So 1 times 1 minus p to the 1 times p. So this should be x equals 1, x, 1 minus p times x times p. So we didn't really even jiggle. We just pulled off the first term and then started our summation at 1, right? plus the summation of 1 minus p to the x times p, x starting at 0 here, right? We didn't pull off the first term, so we split up the sum and we pulled off the first term and the first sum. This sum goes to 1. All right, but now we want to deal with this one. So I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to pull off my, one of my factors of 1 minus p. So 1 minus p comes out. And I'm left with x equals 1 to infinity, x times 1 minus p to the x minus 1 times p, and then we have this plus 1 over here. And don't forget that all of this is equal to what we originally started with, e of x. Okay? Now... Here's where we notice that this sum right in here is the same as this sum right here, right? So we have an e of x embedded within our formula. So we have e of x is equal to 
1 minus p times e of x plus 1. All right? And then if we distribute, collect terms, we have e of x equals e of x minus p times e of x, I have too many parentheses there, plus 1. So those e of x's cancel. Um, let's move over here. What do we have? We had 0 equals 0. Uh, I can't remember. Yes. Minus p times e of x plus 1. Or 1 is equal to p e of x. Or e of x is equal to 1 over p. Hope that's better.